the name of Jesus. Good morning, everyone. And welcome to church this last Thursday and the last day of this month of March. The last day in this first quarter. Can we all please rise to our feet? Indeed, God has been good. How many of us can testify of that? You can say God is good. Not has been good, but God is good. Praise the name of Jesus. That shall remain our testimonies in Jesus' name. God has been good. God is still good. And God will always be good. Praise the name of Jesus. We thank God for seeing us through the first quarter. Very eventful. Let's just appreciate the Lord for that. We may not be where we planned, but God has been faithful regardless. And we thank him for where we are. The Bible says in all things we should give thanks. In all things we should give thanks. Not for all things, in all things. Praise the name of Jesus. So let us deliberately this morning thank him for life. Thank him for strength. Let's thank him for where we are. Let's thank him for the peace we're enjoying. Let's lift up our hands and just thank him. For faithful is he who has begun this good work in us. And he will surely perfect it in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for the gift of this new day. We thank you for seeing us from January up till this last day in the month of March. Indeed, you have been good. Anyhow, we choose to cut it, Father, you have been good. Your goodness can be seen in all things. Your goodness can be seen in so many ways. Father, this morning we are deliberately saying thank you for strength, for health, for peace for our loved ones, for clothes on our backs, for shelter of our heads, for the money in our pockets, for the shoes on our feet. It may be a pair of slippers, maybe a pair of 50,000 Naira shoes, but Father, we have something on our feet and we're saying thank you. Even thank you for the feet we have to put the shoes on. Father, we're so grateful for the air we breathe, that we can see, we can drink for the food we've eaten. Father, we thank you. For the hair on our heads, we say thank you. That we can hear, that we can talk. Father, we say thank you. These are things we tend to take for granted. But if not for you, all these will not be. That we sleep and wake up. That we can move our legs, we can move our fingers. We can blink our eyes. Father, we say thank you. That we can pinch ourselves and feel some pain. Father, we say thank you. You've been so good to us. Father, we say thank you. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They Every morning, great. Oh, Lord, great is thy faithfulness, the steadfast love.
His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning, new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord. Great is thy faithfulness, thou art worthy. Worthy, O Lord, and power, for Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they are. And were created, thou art worthy. Worthy, O Lord, and power for thou hast created all things and for thy pleasure they are and were created father indeed you created all things including us for your pleasure and Father, we pray this morning that may our lives continually bring you pleasure in the name of Jesus. Amen. Can we please commit all we shall do this morning to God's hands that God be glorified. We know there will be an opening prayer which we are taking right now in the praise and worship. We we'll take testimonies. We give our offerings. There will be a special number. We we'll hear the word. We we'll share the grace. That in all this, Father, be glorified. Overrule the agenda of man, and let Your will alone be done here this morning. Let us pray in the name of Jesus. God has something in store for you and I. Yes, we have this service planned out, but God can overrule and have his way. That is our prayer in the name of Jesus. Father, have your way in our midst this morning. In the name of Jesus, overrule the agenda of man. Establish your will in our midst this morning in the name of Jesus. And we pray as this service is in heaven, let it be here on earth in the name of Jesus. Kalabo shandi kahiri bo shandi kaharaba. In every way, Lord, be glorified. In every way, Lord, be glorified. In every way, Lord, be glorified. Rebra kahala mashundo kohori bo sande kahiri bo shande kahara baba baba. Re maskeri bro kohoro bo shande kahiri bo sande kahiri bo shanda. Re masundo kohoro bo shande kahiri bo sanda kahara bo shagadi kari bro bo bo shanda. In the name of Jesus. And what are your desires this morning? You are in the Lord's presence. What are your desires? What are your expectations? Please talk to your father. His ears are not heavy. They cannot hear the faintest of cries from a sincere heart. God hears. The faintest of cries from a sincere heart. God hears. The faintest of cries from a sincere heart. God hears. What are your expectations? What are your desires this morning? 
What is that question you need an answer to? What is that area you need a touch from God? God is able to do all things. He's the all-powerful God. Nothing is bigger than he is. He is the all-powerful God. In Jesus' name. And so, Heavenly Father, once again, we say thank you for this wonderful day. The last day in this first quarter of the year. We thank you for all that you've done. And we're confident that greater things you shall do in the name of Jesus. We commit this meeting into your hands. Father, be glorified. As it is in heaven, let it be here on earth in the name of Jesus. I will decree in advance that all the glory, all the honor, and all the adoration be yours alone. In Jesus' name. Amen. You're here this morning with the testimony you want to share with God's people. There'll be a pastor in the reception hall to attend to you. Have a wonderful service. God bless. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's begin to bless the King of Glory. The Lamb upon the throne. Lift up your hands and worship Him. Jesus, the living God, our strength, our joy. Glory, honor be unto your holy name. We bless you, Lord Jesus. We give you glory, Lord. Hallelujah. This morning we've come to give God the praise. We open our hearts to him in adoration. And we call him holy, awesome God. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It was a big way. Anna see hallelujah. Anna see hallelujah. Jehovah Melo Melo. It was a big way. Anna see hallelujah. Anna see hallelujah. Jehovah Melo.
been so, so kind to me.
distractions on one side. Let us put the burdens on one side and say from the depths of our hearts, Father, thank you. Bible says in all things, give thanks. From the depth of your heart, the way you want this morning, say thank you. Regardless of how you choose to cut it, God has been good. I said it before, regardless of how you choose to cut it, God has been good. So from the depths of your heart, express your gratitude this morning. Father, we say thank you. For who you are, we say thank you. For all you've done, we say thank you. For keeping us, we say thank you. In our waking moments, we see you. While we're sleeping, you're watching over us. Father, we say thank you. We thank you for life. We thank you for health. We thank you for strength. We thank you for joy and peace. Thank you for my brothers. Thank you for my sisters. Thank you for my loved ones. Thank you for peace in the land. We can gather like this and lift up holy hands. Father, we say thank you. Not every nation has such a privilege. Father, from the depths of our hearts, this morning we say thank you. We choose to thank you deliberately this morning. Father, we thank you. Receive our praise and our worship, Lord, and our thanksgiving. In Jesus' name. Praise the name of Jesus. 
Good morning, church. May please have your seats. Thank you, praise team. God has been good, and God is still good. Praise the name of Jesus. And I woke up this morning, I said, Father, thank you. The last day of March, thank you. I may not have all I want, but you've given me all I need. I may not be where I plan to be, but will you put me where I should be right now, and you're with me where I am right now. Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for Fountain of Life Church. Thank you. For our senior pastor and his family, we say thank you. For every member of this church and all that is tied to us, Father, we say thank you. We say thank you. We say thank you. Amen. We have just one testimony this morning. Sister Miriam, can you please come forward? Please encourage her as she comes. Please encourage her as she comes. Hallelujah. Praise Master Jesus. Pastor, thank you. Thank you all the pastors in this house. Thank you, my senior pastor. Thank you for this wonderful privilege. I give God the glory. I want to thank God for the life of my son. You know, six years ago, he got admission into our chief federal polytechnic to read a letter. Let. So many people, um, the many neighbors that heard say, ah, mother, why will you just give him chance to go and read that course? It's a tough course, so, ah, that is why so I now know why the proverb says, don't speak into the hearing of the fool, hmm. because they will discourage you. But I went to my closet. The father was already discouraged. I told him, I said, come, you didn't choose the cause for him. I didn't choose the cause for him. It's between him and God. All we have to do is to support him with prayer. Then I went to my closet. I said, God, you are my God. And we come and testify to your glory. My son will graduate without any carryover in the name of Jesus. So I'm here today to give God the glory. The almighty God, who does not look sides, who does not look face. Because if they are sharing graduates, I don't think they will give me anyone. Mm. At all, at all. Mm. But today I'm here to testify to the glory of God. I say, Lord, thank you. The journey of five years ended last week, Thursday. He graduated. I let her let out chief federal polytechnic. I give God the glory. I give God the honor. I give God up for his grace and his mercy. For it is doing and it is marvelous in our sight. To you alone be all the glory in the name of Jesus. He has done so much for me. I cannot tell it all. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. The joy of a mother. No man can pay for that that our children go to school and they graduate. It's the Lord's doing. That they graduate and finish well. We thank God for that. No carryover. You know what this system is, how it can be. Due to no fault of yours, you can just hit a stumbling block. But God saw that boy through and today he's a graduate. And the joy of the mother and the glory of the Lord. Father, we thank you and we pray that greater things shall be heard and said of this young man in the name of Jesus. And for all our children at the various levels, they shall finish well. They shall pass with flying colors in the name of Jesus. We command every obstacle to be cleared from their path in the name of Jesus. There will be no hindrance in the name of Jesus. They shall study, understand what they are taught, and they shall pass their exams well in the name of Jesus. And when they graduate, they shall get good jobs, well-paying jobs, fulfilling jobs in the name of Jesus. And Father, for us parents, that which we need to give our children the best of education, we shall not lack it in the name of Jesus. We return all the praise unto you in Jesus' name. Praise the name of Jesus. 
quite a few of our children and parents graduated this season. Many first degrees, some masters, some PhDs. Across board. Across board. It is the Lord's doing. And Father, we return all the glory unto you as a church in Jesus' name. We shall return to give such about our own children too. In Jesus' name. Praise the name of Jesus. Can you please bring out our offerings to appreciate the Lord for his faithfulness? For his faithfulness. His faithfulness. And can you please rise to our feet? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this privilege we have to bring our offerings before you once again this morning. We thank you for who you are and we love you for who you are. And Father, as our hands are up in abundance, may they not come down due to lack of penury in Jesus' name. Beyond the finances, beyond the money, Father, receive our hearts, our hearts of gratitude, of thanksgiving, in the name of Jesus. Let our offerings come up to you as a sweet smelling savour. And let the blessings due to us not elude us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please have your seats. Receive the ministry of the Grace Band.
man. That was a lovely ministration. Thank you so much. God bless you. Hallelujah. You know, I don't know what you came with this morning. I just came to say thank you. The last day of this quarter, the last day of the first quarter of this year, I can assure you we've done nothing to keep ourselves alive. We've done nothing to protect ourselves. The Bible says, except the Lord guards the city, the watchman stayeth awake in vain. What mercy and grace have continually wrought for us this first quarter, we can never truly know. We can only imagine. Could we rise to our feet? And for yourself, for yourself, say thank you yet again for yourself. And you know those specific things the Lord has done for you. And for those things we don't even know that he has done for us. But from your heart, despite and in spite of whatever, I want you to say thank you this morning. Ah, none of us can keep ourselves alive. Talk less of keeping our spouses or our children or our parents or our siblings alive. But it's the God that we serve that showeth us mercy continually. And by his mercies, we are not consumed. Father, we say thank you this morning for January, for February, for March. The first quarter, you've rolled it away. And here we are. Here we are still standing. Father, we say thank you. Thank you. Without reservation, we say thank you. Without any complaints, we say thank you. Holding nothing back, we say thank you, Jesus. Father, we worship you. You're a good God. That's all you are. You're a good God. You're a good God. Excellent. More than excellent, Father. We worship you this morning. We say thank you for the gift of every day of this first quarter. For life. You alone give life. You alone sustain life. Protecting and shielding us from all evil. Delivering us. Providing for us. Healing us. Protecting us. Shielding us. Blessing us. Satisfying our mouth with good things. Father, we worship you. Father, we say thank you. Accept our gratitude. Accept our worship. Father, we say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jesus, thank you. Let's just sing a song of gratitude. Meloni maro ninu oreti baba shen. Meloni maro ninu oreti jesu shen. Ore rema bo o chuyori o kulo. Meloni.
we say thank you. We can never thank you enough. Thank you, Father. Now we're going to be praying for our nation, Nigeria. I'm sure we're all concerned about all that's been going on. Our power supply is almost like it's collapsed. There's so much insecurity in the land. Killings every day. Kaduna Airport attacked. The Kaduna Abuja rain train attacked. Ours is not to succumb to fear. Ours is not to throw up our hands in hopelessness. As the church goes, so the nation goes. Pastor has said that over and over again. God is counting on the church to pray. And indeed be the light of the world. We're going to be praying this morning. Crying out to God for his mighty hand of intervention. Some people say Nigeria is a failed state. I always stop them. Don't say that. Things are going to get better. And please I beg you. Do not open your mouth. To speak profanities. Or things that will not edify about this nation. We are merchants of truth, not dealers in lies and facts. The truth is that our God is bigger than whatever we're grappling with. The truth is that there's a power of God available to turn things around. And God is counting on us. It's a spiritual partnership. If we don't do our part, God will just sit down and be looking at us. We have to pray. And everywhere you are, shine the light of the Lord. In your own world, do things the way God expects you to do it. But please, do not join the multitude to say Nigeria is a failed state. To say it is over for Nigeria. To say it is hopeless. To say everybody go their ways. Every time God talks about Nigeria, he says Nigeria. He doesn't say north, south. He says Nigeria. So we're going to pray. We're going to cry out for mercy. Father, have mercy upon this land. You are God. There's nothing you cannot do. Visit this nation with your power. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. We are crying out to God. Father, have mercy. Forgive our sins. Forgive our sins as a nation. Have mercy. But we cry out for your mighty hand of intervention. Oh, let your right hand do valiantly for this nation. Let your mighty arm arise for this nation. Please pray. We don't have too much time to pray, but we're going to pray. The Lord says, call upon me in the day of trouble and I will answer you. We're calling upon the Lord. There's so much trouble in the land. The Lord says, call upon me in the day of trouble and I will hear and I will answer. We call upon you, Jehovah. Jehovah, Sabaoth, man of war. Jehovah, I shall die. A God who is more than enough. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. Arise in your mercy. Arise in your compassion. Arise and turn things around in this land. Turn things around in this land. Father, we cry out for your supernatural intervention. Hey, Abakasa. Tewe be ia ia ia. Oroburi akasa ia 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 ia. Koroburi akasa. In Jesus' name. Let us remember the God we serve is the God of the whole earth. Nigeria's matter is a simple matter before him. So I want you to not be discouraged. You cannot be discouraged. If the church is discouraged, where is the hope? You can, it doesn't matter what it gets to. We have God. We're not going to stay in a place of authority. Come against every wicked spirit unleashed against this land. Every spirit of violence. Every spirit of death. Every spirit of destruction. For the past almost two weeks daily. Villages have been attacked in Kaduna and other parts of this nation. If you check the news, 25 killed today. 50, and I say, are these chickens? Are these chickens? 
these are human beings. We all, we've read about the train attack. Begin to declare. Begin to come against anything that has come against this nation. We come against it in Jesus' name. We raise the standard of the blood of Jesus. The blood that can never lose its power. We say the blood of Jesus is against every evil, wicked spirit unleashed against this nation. Every spirit of violence. Every spirit of greed. Every spirit of destruction and wickedness. We say the blood of Jesus is against you. We take back our nation from your hands. We say get out of this nation. Get out of this nation. The spirit of the man of darkness. We say the blood of Jesus is against you. The spirit of the man of darkness. We say the blood of Jesus is against you. The spirit of the man of darkness. We say the blood of Jesus is against you. We come against you, Satan. We come against you, Satan. By whatever name you are called. Be you wicked spirits in high places. Be you rulers of darkness of this world. Be you demons. Be you principalities and powers. We say the blood of Jesus. The blood you have no answer to. Is against you. Concerning our nation, Nigeria. The blood of Jesus is against you. We plead the blood of Jesus. 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 In Jesus' name. I want to encourage you. You cannot be casual about the matters of Nigeria. Do not think you are safe in Lagos. And she beat in Kaduna. What hits Kaduna hits everywhere. So I want to encourage you, aside from the prayers we pray here, make it a point of duty to pray for Nigeria. What you don't like, stand against it. That is the authority we have. It is us God is counting upon. You know, a lot of those train victims are unaccounted for. They just seem to have vanished from the surface of the earth. They can't reach them with their phones. We don't, families are just getting up to say, we cannot, a whole family, a husband, a wife, and four little children. Nobody has records of where they are. The oldest of those children looks like about eight or ten. And there's a young one that's about 18 months or two. That is just an example. It is until their families are crying out that everybody's doing they are missing. But you know they are not missing. The eyes of the Lord knows exactly where they are. We're going to stand as a house. If you were in trouble, you want people to pray. I want us to cry out to Jehovah supernatural intervention anywhere all these victims are we say hey, permit them in Jesus name father dispatch your angels your angels of deliverance your angels of deliverance we will not allow evil evil will not overrun Nigeria evil will not overrun Nigeria evil will not overrun Nigeria stand in the authority you have as a child of the most high God we call forth every kidnapped victim we decree confusion in the camp of the enemy. We decree confusion in the camp of the enemy. Father, send your ambushment. Father, send your ambushment. Father, send your ambushment. Let them begin to destroy one another. Let them begin to destroy one another. Father, you did it in the days of old. Father, you did it in the days of old. Hayabakasa. Paworororo. Payabakasa. In Jesus' name. Please, I want us to be clear what we're praying about. Not one of those kidnapped victims shall be lost. They are human beings like me and you. They have families. We don't have to know their names. God knows them by name. But I encourage you be committed in this prayer. They are in trouble and they need help. If you and I were in trouble, we would be glad that people are praying for us. Don't, don't be overwhelmed. God is in full control. What we are declaring is that they shall be released. They shall be found. They shall escape. None shall be lost. We decree confusion in the camp of the enemy. We say the Lord sends ambushments. They begin to fight and destroy one another. The Lord is going to rain down hell stones. What's happened in the Bible is going to happen in Nigeria. The God of Nigeria arises in the name of Jesus. Pray the Spirit for a few more minutes. Pray the Spirit for a few more minutes. We shall not lose any of those victims. None shall be lost. None shall be lost. We stay in the hand of the evil one. We stay in the hand of the evil one. In the name of Jesus. None shall be injured. None shall be raped. None shall be molested. We say confusion in the camp of the enemy. The last prayer point. The last prayer point. We serve a God of mercy. We serve a God that is good. But don't mess with this God. He's a God of vengeance. 
I have no mercy for the wicked. If you've committed yourself to be wicked, that means you're standing against my God. I want us to pray the God of vengeance arises. I want the fear and the dread of this God to fall upon this land and fall upon our enemies. Anyone that has raised them up as an enemy of Nigeria is an enemy of God. Jehovah Sabaoth, Jehovah the God of vengeance, arise in your anger, arise in your wrath. Be ruthless with our enemies. Be ruthless with our enemies. Wipe them out. 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 In the name of Jesus. Let me remind you. Let me remind you. When you hear the name of Pharaoh and his chariots, what are they? Items in history. Items in history. All we remember is that they were buried in the Red Sea. That is our God. Every enemy of Nigeria, we decree this day in the name of Jesus, they become items in history because they are wiped out by our God. The vengeance of our God is arisen against them. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Father, arise in your wrath. Arise in your vengeance. Arise in your sudden displeasure. Fight for this nation. Fight for your people. Fight for the works of your hands. Father, we worship you. Begin to plead the blood of Jesus over our nation, Nigeria. We plead the blood of Jesus. Evil will not overrun this land. We say no. Evil will not overrun this land. We say no. Evil will not overrun this land. We say no. In the name of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus. We raise the everlasting standard of our covenant. The blood that will never lose its power. We plead the blood of Jesus over the north, over Kaduna, over Benue State, over every inch of the north. We plead the blood of Jesus over the south, over the east, over the west, over the center, everywhere. We plead the blood of Jesus. Father, we worship you. We thank you. You're a God who hears and answers. You're a God who has always loved Nigeria especially. Thank you for doing much more than we have asked. Blessed be your holy name. Just wave to God. Just wave to him. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you that we call and you hear and you answer. Hallelujah. I bring greetings from our senior pastor. We honor you, pastor. We're missing you terribly. But we know, like you told us on Sunday, very soon, very soon, you just show up. Let's just wave to him. Pastor, we love you. We thank God for you. Hallelujah. It gives me great pleasure to bring up a special woman of God this morning to minister to us. She's ageless. Don't be deceived by her looks. Don't be deceived by her looks. She's completely ageless. You'll be shocked if you know her age. But that shows the beauty of the heart within. I assure you, you're going to be blessed this morning. Welcome with me, my sister, Pastor Lara Adesoya. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh God, you're good. You are so good. Oh my God. Hallelujah. Shall we wave our hands to him? Let's just wave our hands to him. He deserves our worship, our praise. Generations after generations keep praising you yet no word sums you up. Then I ask the Lord what name fits you? And he said, yeah. Oh, a generation of 
third generation Keep praising you Yet no one turns you up Then I ask the Lord What name fits you? Everybody say And he say
to the last day in the first quarter of 2022. I want to appreciate my pastor for giving me the opportunity to minister this morning. May the glory of the Lord over your life never diminish in the mighty name of Jesus. When Pastor Tosin was praying, I said yes. Because honestly, I've just been down concerning what is happening in Nigeria. I've been praying and praying and praying. And today, yes, I'm minister just for, for some few minutes. But we're going to pray. We are going to pray. A lot is happening that we're not even hearing. Oh, a lot is happening. And we shouldn't think that, like she said, we're comfortable in Lagos State and it's not here. Many things are even happening here you don't know. So much of evil. How can somebody come all the way from Ibadan to come and be packing children? And when they asked him, how many have you picked? He said, many. You just bring a bus and you'll be packing the school children. And when they asked him, what do you use them for? He said, rituals. Hmm. There's so much evil on the face of the earth. Please, I'd like us to open our Bibles to Matthew 24. We're going to read Matthew 24 from the beginning to the end. And we're also going to read... Amos, 
9, 1 to the end. They have a lot of similar similarities. I want us to open to the message version, please. Matthew 24. And it says, Jesus then left the temple. As he walked away, his disciples pointed out how very impressive the temple architecture was. And Jesus said, you are not impressed by all the sheer size. Are you? The truth of the matter is that there is not a stone in that building that is not going to end up in a pile of rubble. Later, as he was sitting on Mount Olives, his disciples approached and asked him, Tell us, when are these things going to happen? What will be the sign of your coming that the time's up? And Jesus said, Watch out for many doomsday de deceivers. Many leaders are going to show up with forged identities claiming... I am Christ, the Messiah. They will deceive a lot of people. When reports come in of war and rumors of wars, keep your head and don't panic. This is routine history. This is no sign of the end. Nation will fight nation and ruler fight ruler. Over and over. Famines and earthquakes will occur in various places. This is nothing compared to what is coming. They are going to throw you to the wolves and kill you. Everyone hating you because you carry my name. Is it familiar? And then going from bad to worse, it will be dog eat dog. Everyone at each other's throats. Everyone hating each other. In the confusion, lying preachers will come forward and deceive a lot of people. For many others, the overwhelming spread of evil will do them in. Nothing, nothing left of their love but a mound of ashes. Staying with it, that's what God requires. Stay with it to the end. You won't be sorry and you'll be saved. You won't be sorry and you'll be saved. All during this time, the good news, the message of the kingdom will be preached all over the world. A witness staked out in every country and then the end will come. But be ready to run for it. When you see the monster of desecration set up in the temple sanctuary, the prophet Daniel described this. If you've read Daniel, you'll know that I am talk what I am talking about. If you are living in Judea at the time, run for the hills. If you are walking in the yard, don't return to the house to get anything. If you are out in the field, don't go back and get your coat. Pregnant and nursing mothers will have it especially hard. Hope and pray this won't happen during the winter or on a Sabbath. This is going to be trouble on a scale beyond what the world has even seen or will see again. If these days of trouble were left to run their course, nobody could make it. But on account of God's chosen people, the trouble will be cut short. God loves us so much. If anyone tries to flag you down, calling out, here is the Messiah or points, there he is. Don't fall for it. For fake Messiahs and lying preachers are going to pop up everywhere. Their impressive cred credentials and dazzling performances we pull the wool over the, the eyes of even those who ought to know better. But I have given you fair warning. So if they say, run to the country and see him arrive. Or quick, get down, down, downtown, see him come. Don't give them the time of day. 
the arrival of the Son of Man isn't something you go to see. He comes like swift lightning to you. Whenever you see crowds gathering, think of carrion vultures, circling, moving in, hovering over a routing cankers. You can be quite sure that it is not the living son of man pulling in those crowds. Following those hard times, sun will fade out, moon cloud over, stars fall out of the sky, cosmic powers tremble, then the arrival of the son of man it will fill the skies. No one will miss it. Already people all over the world, outsiders to the splendors and power, will raise a huge lament and they will watch the winds. It says here, Son of man blazing out of heaven. At that same moment, he'll dispatch his angels with a trumpet blast summons, pulling in God's chosen from the four winds from pole to pole. Take a lesson from the fig tree. From the moment you notice its buds form, the merest hint of green, you know summer is just around the corner, so it is with you. When you see all these things, you'll know he's at the door. Don't take this lightly. I'm not just saying this for some future generation, but for all of you. This age continues until all these things take place. Sky and earth will wear out my words won't. But the exact day and hour, no one knows that. Not even heaven's angels, not even the son, only the father knows. The arrival of the son of man will take place in the times like Noah's. Before the great flood, everyone was carrying on as usual, having a good time right up to the day. Noah, but Ed, you can continue. I wanted to read it to the end, but it's taking my time. Now, what are we saying? I read this. And I started wondering, are we ready? Are we prepared? It's not to scare anybody, but we've got to be ready. We heard what um, the bomb blasts, so many in that train. Many, many different people. Not only people in Kaduna, all over. It says, Jesus then left the temple. And as he walked away, his disciples pointed out how very impressive the temple architecture was. He said, he's not concerned about the architecture of the building. It can be beautiful. Everywhere can be beautiful. But he's talking of the architecture of your hearts. The design of your hearts. What is there in your heart? What, what have you designed? What is there in your heart? Is what God is asking us. He wants to inscribe himself in our hearts. Our well-designed cultured. Cultured with the words and the meditation of God. Because when we know the word and we meditate day in and day out on the word, things happen. When we face situations, we know how to react. But when we are empty and we just come to church just to enjoy, something is not right somewhere. How can you imagine someone who is a child of God going around from one place to the other looking for what? And that is what he's talking about. There are so many fake people all over the world. Thank God for our church and thank God for our pastor. Oh, thank God. I can always say, touching my heart, that I know who my pastor is. We are eating the word here. Every pastor that comes up comes to minister the word. And it will be... 
car, it will be a problem if you are coming to this house and you don't know the word. Oh, it will. Because when the fake one comes, you will, you will know, you will know that this one is not it. I've seen many things on WhatsApp that I wonder, did they do something to their brain? A pastor will be ministering and will be giving women bath in the church. He will say he's a pastor. He's not. And those people, some of them are eager to hear, to hear the word. So they feel the man is doing the right thing. But it's because they are not well fed. Because if they are well fed, they will not be in such a gathering. And that is why the Bible says that deceivers will come. But he was talking to the Christians. He said, be careful. I'm giving you a warning. I'm giving you a warning. You that you think you stand, take heed lest you fall. Because when miracles or something is happening here, you want to be there. When another thing is happening there, you want to be there. But he said, it's a lie. Jesus doesn't come to a place. It's in your heart. The Lord speaks to us every day. He speaks to us every day. But if you don't engage God in speaking with him all the time, you will not hear him. He said, he that dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. It's not a cliche. When we feed on the word, the wicked will be punished. Whether they want to hear it or not, the wicked will be punished. It will be sad if after you've heard so much of the word, you allow somebody to lure you away. It will be sad. Because someone that steals with a pen and takes millions is not different from the person that pushes down a house or a building and goes to steal or whatever it is. There's so many things we do in the secrets that God sees we don't see. We just see ourselves. We're so different. Our faces are different. Please, this time is a time that everyone must be very, very intentional. We cannot afford to play. We cannot afford to do things psychedelically or however they say it and believe that all is well praise the Lord the Bible says we know what our second Corinthians 3 18 says so all of us who have had that veil removed can see and reflect the glory of the Lord and the Lord who is the spirit makes us more and more like him as we are changed into his glorious image. Are we going to beg that they should give us the veil again to cover our faces? The veil has been removed. We are free. And so when we go back, when we go back to the old ways, then we are saying the veil, come back. We are using that veil again. Because we don't want to be free. The veil can be anything that we are doing that does not align with the word of God. That's the veil. If we read Amos 9, please put Amos 9, 1. I want us to read that one. And I want us to see the resemblance of Matthew 24 to Amos 9. Even in those days, God was warning the children of Israelites. Their sins were so much that God took action to break down. And he says, I saw my master standing beside the altar at the shrine. He said, hit the top of the shrine's pillars. Make the floor shake. The roofs are about to fall on the, on the heads of the people. And whosoever is still alive, I 
I will kill. No one will get away. No runaways will make it. If they dig their way down into the underworld, I'll find them and bring them up. I'll, if they climb to the stars, I'll find them and bring them down. If they hide out at the top of the mountain cam camel, I'll find them and bring them back. If they dive to the bottom of the ocean, I'll send dragon to swallow them up for the evil one. If they're captured alive, they're captured alive by their enemies, I'll send sword to kill them. I'll make up my mind to hurt them, not help them. Praise the Lord. What are we saying here? The wicked will be punished. Ah, they'll be punished. Innocent blood has been shed. They will be punished. They will not be spared. How can in a nation like our country, Nigeria, it's an abomination to see all these things happening. I'm sorry to say, and yet we have leaders. Nothing is happening. People are being slaughtered every day. Nothing is happening. We are not hearing anything. Security is down. Everything is down. Fuel is down. No water. No light. Nothing. And we have leaders. Hmm. I hope you all have our PVC. <laughs> hey. If you have not been voting before, uh, please register now. Because that is your power. We have been praying. How can we be praying every day, morning and night? Father God, give us our David. Father God, a stranger will not rule over this country. Evil man will, and yet, you don't have your PVCs. And when the time comes, we're not coming out. Even now, electronically, we can vote electronically, isn't it? Please, let's register. There must be a change. God has promised us a new Nigeria. He has promised us a new Nigeria and we believe it. So what are we waiting for? We have to be intentional. Our God is good. I'm happy for the people in church today. And why am I happy? We could have been anywhere. But you, it's the food you want to be in his presence. You want to hear from the throne of grace. You want to dine with God. God is good. He said, I saw the Lord standing by the altar. Standing by the altar. Because the sin of the Israelite was too much. And he was ready to shake and to break that land so that all those evil people will be destroyed. And so we ourselves, as we see in the word, God is no respecter of any persons. At times when I read some passages in the Bible, I say, ah, God, God is talking to Christians. It's not to unbelievers. He say, you that you think you stand, that's a believer. Take heed, lest you fall. Don't take some things for granted. Don't say, ah, no, everybody's doing it, so I can do it now. It's not a big deal. No. We can't do that. I just want, I want, to rem I want us to, re to remind ourselves. When God says, then if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, he's talking to us Christians. There's something wrong somewhere when he's saying that. Something, there's something that we need to pay attention to and repent and repent and repent and pray. Then he's talking to us. So he's telling us we're not perfect. There's some things that we still need to pray about. There's some things that we still need to drop. There's some things that we still need to call him, his attention to. And in Titus, it says, everything is pure to those whose hearts are pure. But nothing is pure to those who are corrupt and unbelieving. Because their minds and consci consciences are corrupted. Such people claim they know God. But they deny him by the way they live. 
They are detestable and disobedient, worthless for doing anything good. God is still talking to us. Let our hearts be pure. Let our hearts be pure. What will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? We've got to be reminding ourselves all the time that we just have to know who we are serving. And he tells us in also 2 Corinthians 30, he says, examine yourself to see if your faith is genuine. Test yourselves. Surely you know that Jesus Christ is among you. If not, you have failed the test of genuine faith. We are not here to scold anybody. I'm talking to myself too. Oh, I'm talking to myself. Let's examine our lives. Matthew 24 is in the New Testament. We have read and you can go home and finish it. There's so much that is there. For us to know that this is the time to evangelize. He says even when war and things are going on, people are still evangelizing. They are still winning souls into the kingdom. We can't afford to keep quiet. We can't afford to keep quiet. If I ask how many people have won souls to the kingdom or even spoken to anybody this year, if I want to say, only God knows whether we can count the numbers. Please. The time is not now, but it's close. He says, when you see these things happening, wars, rumors of war, it is not the end yet. But it is at the door. We have to be intentional. In our service to God, in serving God, in our life, in our character, in our attitudes, in the office, what we do, what we say, how we approach people, how we attend to them. What, we have to make it a point of duty to ask ourselves, am I doing it right? Praise the Lord. In Romans 6, 1 to 6, it says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were also baptized into his death? Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death. That Jesus as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father. Even so, we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. So who are you? And who am I? What are we living for? Is it for Jesus? What are we living for? I used to sing a song that in those days, which I composed myself, from the lyrics of a particular song. And it says, What am I living for? Oh, is it for Jesus? Oh, what am I living for? Is it for Christ? Oh, what are you living for? Is it for Jesus? Oh, yes, nobody else, nobody else but him. When I was hungry, he gave me food. 
Oh, when I was thirsty, he gave me drinks. Oh, when I was homeless, he gave me shelter. Oh, yes, nobody else, nobody else but him. Oh, what are you living for? Is it for Jesus? What are you living for? Is it for Christ? Oh, what are you living for, my brothers? Is it for Jesus? Oh, yes. Oh, nobody else. Oh, nobody else but him. Are you living for Christ? Are you living for Christ? Are you happy to be in Christ? Are you happy to identify with Christ? Are you ready to preach and to tell everyone, even in this chaos, I am for Christ? Or are you still shy, hiding? Oh, they don't, they don't have to know. You are doing, there are some friends that shouldn't know who you are. We know it all, we've read it. And we know that it pays to be in Christ. And as we read in Matthew 24, it says persecution shall come. Oh, he said they will hate you because you carry my name. In the office, they will not give what is due to you because of who you are. So how do you feel? Do you react and fight in the flesh or you fight on your knees and destroy all their plans because they're against a child of God? We have to know what we carry. We carry power. You carry power and you carry the anointing. Everyone here is a carrier of the anointing of God. And there is nothing that you cannot do in that name. I want us to be bold. It is time to be bold for Christ. It is time to be intentional for Christ. It is time because things are happening. Depression is setting into some people. No money, nothing. Financial chaos. A lot of things happen everywhere. Even to eat is a problem. But this God, when you cry unto him, he's always there. Oh, he never leaves his children. He loves us so much and he cares for us. I just want to leave us with this before we start praying. In Psalm 139, 1 to 2, it says, Oh Lord, you have examined my heart and know everything about me. You know when I am sitting down or standing. You know my thoughts even when I am, not, I am far away. Jesus said, as the father loved me, I too love you. Remain in my love. The good news is that Jesus loves us just as God the father loved him. In this truth, we can rest secure and at peace. But God shows his love for us because while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. God loves us so much. Oh, God loves us so much. And he says, and may you have the power to understand as all God's people should. How wide, how long, how high, how deep is the love that I have for you? Please let us rise. God has love. He loves us so much. He cares so much for us. That we cannot walk by sight of what we are seeing, but by the word of God. When you walk by the word of God, you don't fret. You are not worried. Because you know who you serve. We serve the living God. The almighty God. The one that changeth not. I want you to start praying right now. Just thank God for your life. Is there anything that you need to drop at the altar of the Lord? 
Oh, there's some secret things that we're still doing in secret. Ask God for forgiveness and drop it there. Ask the, for the grace of God to help you, to help me, so that, Lord, I can be perfect. So that when you see me, Almighty God, you will know. Yes, I might have made mistakes sometimes. But, Father God, I'm sorry. Oh, come into my heart again. Help me. Help me, oh Lord, to see you again. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Our God is a good God. Oh, praise the Lord. Yes. I want us to pray for our country, Nigeria. Have just three minutes to go. And I want us to pray for the leaders. Yes, we have prayed for Nigeria. I want us to pray for the leaders. Something is happening somewhere. God, help us with our leaders. Help us. Let them be sensitive to what is happening in the country. We have ministers everywhere of education, security, everywhere. Lord, help us, oh Lord. Rescue us from those people. Rescue us, oh Lord. Snatch us from the hands of the enemy in the name of Jesus. Oh, my sekeriga son of Boshendiria. Remo sekeriga sekeria. All those, Lord God Almighty, that are walking against your will, see them out, Lord. Expose them, Almighty God. Shame them, Almighty Father. Oh, Rama sekeriga sekeria. There's no time for pretense now. We are all into it right now. So we need to pray. And let's pull down every negativity of our country. In the mighty name of Jesus. Isaiah 28, 15, 17 and 19. NLT says. You boast. We have struck a bargain to cheat death. And have made a deal to dodge the grave. The coming destruction can never touch us. For we have built a strong refuge made of lies and deception. I will test you with the measuring line of justice and the plumb line of righteousness. Since you refuse, your refuge is made of lies, a hailstone will knock it down. Since it is made of deception, a flood will slip, sweep it away. I will cancel the bargain you made to cheat death. And I will overturn your deal to touch the grave. We are praying that everyone that feels that he cannot be touched wherever he is. And is doing and cheating and destroying this country. The father says that the person will not escape in the name of Jesus. Rama second, the person will not escape in the mighty name of Jesus. He says, I am going to measure your activities with a measuring line of right, a plumb line of righteousness. Any man that is not righteous, Rabbi Sekeria, God is saying, It is time. It is time for you to be removed. In the mighty name of Jesus. Rama Sekeria Sekeria. Oh Sekeria. If you think you have armored cars, if you think you have bulletproof cars, Rimo Sekeriga Sekeria. As long as you are cheating the citizens of this country, as long as you are doing evil to this country, he says he will search you out. There's no hiding place. There is no hiding place. Rescue us, O Lord. Rescue us, O Lord. Rama Sondorobo Shekeria, Hora Baba, Hori Mo Sekeria, Rimo Sekeriga Zekeria, Hora Baba, Rama Sonobo Shenia. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Rama Sonobo Shenia. Ah, our God is good. And in Isaiah 62, 8 and 9, he says, God has taken a solemn oath, an oath he means to keep. Never again will I open your grain, field bands to your enemies. To loot and to eat. Oh, God is assuring us that never again, never again will He allow the full and headsmen and all the negativities to come again into our country. In the mighty name of Jesus. Rama Sekeriga Sekeriga. 
He said, never again will foreigners drink the wine that you worked so hard to produce. God is real. God is real. Never again, never again, never again. Rama Sekerika Zegera. Will they take our wine in the name of Jesus? Rimo Sekeria, Rababa Kasiria, Rimo Sekeriga Zegera. What we have worked hard for, it will not be taken by foreigners in the mighty name of Jesus. Rima Sekeriga Zondrobo, O Rababa, O Rimo Sekeria, O Rimo Siriba Kuntaria, Rimo Sekeriga Zegera. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Lord, we worship you. Father God, we bless you. And we exalt your holy name. In Jesus' wonderful name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We can do better than that for Pastor Lara. Thank you so much, Pastor Lara. Thank you for being such an incredible blessing. Let's keep clapping. Let's encourage her. That was from the heart. Thank you so much, Pastor Lara. Thank you so much. The Lord will help us in our journey of life. Jesus must always be at the center. Every single second. There's no vacation of the pleasure of God. You cannot say, God, just allow me these five minutes. No. Every moment is the Lord's. Let us remember we were bought with a high price. God laid himself down to win us to himself. Just wave to the Lord. Just say, Father, thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. In case you are here, you haven't given your life to Jesus. Maybe you just come and fellowship with us and maybe even fellowship with other churches. But you've never made that deliberate commitment. You have to. You have to. Everything about our God is precise and intentional. You don't, like I've given the example before, I want an American visa and I'm just loitering around the embassy. I start with them every day. I close it. Am I ever going to get that visa? I have to apply. I have to do certain things that will make me eligible for the visa. It doesn't matter if I get there at 4 a.m. and leave at 12 midnight. I'll probably even get arrested after a while. Sir. So please, it has to be deliberate. If you want to give your heart to Christ, either here or online, please just say this prayer. Heavenly Father, I come to you and I ask for mercy. Please forgive my sins. Cleanse me with the blood of Jesus. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Thank you, Father. I'm now your child. I'm now born again. In Jesus' name. If you said this prayer online, please just send a message to us. That's the email address. Just send a message to us and we'll respond. If you gave your life here, please just walk up to any of us pastors or any of the ushers and just say, I just gave my life to Christ and we'll give you some materials and we encourage you to keep coming, keep coming and we know that you'll be blessed. Could we rise to our feet? I want us to do something very quickly in less than 10 minutes. You see, it's always nice to pay forward. April is starting tomorrow. I want us to be intentional and just give God some advanced praise. Let us settle April. You see, everything is intentional. We're not going to dance. I'm going to shout praise the Lord. I was asking the Holy Spirit. I said, should we shout three times? Should we shout? And I just said, why can't we shout for every day in April? You know, hallelujah is a victory sound. In the spirit realm, things happen when we shout hallelujah. So I want to secure every day in April. There are 30 days in April. I'm going to say praise the Lord 30 times. It's not, we're not just shouting. It's not for want of anything to do. It's deliberate. You see, we have our strategies in the kingdom. And this is one of it. So I want you to know that you have settled April with God. And the God we serve that is faithful. He says, when you seek me, you will find me. When you call, I will answer. So deliberately and intentionally, from the bowels of your spirit, you are going to praise the Lord for every day in April. And let us see whether that God that we have called upon 
will not answer. Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! 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 Take a deep breath. The last five. You see, God is precise. Somebody say six. The last six. Hmm. I've tried this God. I have tested this God. He's too precise. As you seek him, you will find him. And you not only find him, he will come with extra. So this last six. Hmm. You know what you want. You know what you need. And let me tell you something I always do. After I ask God what I want and what I need, and I say, you know what, Father? You know you are God. Oh, yeah. Just slap me all over with your goodness. Do for me what I cannot even think for myself. Give me what I cannot even ask for. Just blow my mind. This last six is to blow my mind. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! 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 Because we want extra. Because we want extra. One more extra. You see, I'm used to asking God. He knows me. I just say, Father, extra, 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 extra. And he always comes. So for the extra, what you and I could not have asked for, what you and I could not have thought of in our minds, what Jehovah would have said, hey, Jehovah don't land. Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! Father, we worship you. We thank you for the God that you are. We thank you for how you are. We thank you for the father that you are. More than most excellent father. We have sought you. We know we will find you. We have called upon you. We know you would answer. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you for a glorious April. Father, we worship you. The month of the resurrection is not an ordinary month. Just bless the Lord. Can we please share the grace? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, Rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. And so sin shall not have dominion over us. For the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells inside of us. And quickens our mortal bodies to the glory of his holy name. Amen.